right. So when we graph quadratic inequalities, there's a couple of detailed things that we have to pay attention to. One of them is going to be when we graph our parabolas, they're not always necessarily going to be solid lines anymore. If you see an or equal sign underneath the inequality part, we're going to use a solid lined parabola. However, if it's just less than or greater than, we're going to use a dashed or a dotted line to be able to signify the difference between those. And then trying to figure out, well, how do I graph it? You know, do I have to use a vertex form? Do I have to, what do I have to do? Well, it's going to depend. So sometimes we're going to use the calculator. Sometimes we may use a chart. And then sometimes, depending on the way that it's drawn, we may use intercepts. So we'll kind of see the way it's written out, which way we're going to do that for each one. And then our final little thing we're going to be watching for is where do we shade? We're going to be shading because we're dealing with inequalities here. So am I going to be doing it inside or outside the curve? Well, here's how we're going to figure this out. We're going to do a test point. that is inside the parabola. Doesn't matter what point we test, but we're going to test a point in there. And if when we test it, if the statement we get is true, so like if it said 4 is greater than 0, okay, that'd be true, we'll shade inside the curve. If it's false, if we don't get a true statement, we're going to shade outside of the curve. So there's a few different things going on here, but once we do a couple, kind of get into the mode, It'll be all right. But I'm going to do the best I can to show you on as many of these as possible how I could graph these without having to necessarily deal with the calculator. Okay? So, okay, these first three are all going to be very similar. They're all just plain old x squareds that move up and down. So what we're going to do, thank you, is we're going to take a peek at these with using zero as the center of a chart. Now these are all going to be easy enough using x is 0 as the center that we're basically going to be able to do most of this stuff in our head. So once I get that 0 in, basically I'm plugging in the 0 for x and whatever I get out is going to be y. Well 0 squared is 0, I can handle that. And then to build out from there, because I want several points, so this is simple. I'll build, you know, one to the left and one to the right. One squared is one. Okay. And these will always be the same. Just like it was when we first started graphing parabolas. And so if I just stretch this out. Oops, that's negative. Two squared is four. <coughs> bless you. And I'll see the symmetry. And you're like, now could I do that on the calculator though? Sure. I always have an option if I have the calculator of going to this and just saying, okay, y equals x squared. Let me bring up the chart. Now, I don't see symmetry. Okay, now I see the symmetry. I can kind of scroll up and down and I see the same numbers that I just figured out using my brain, which makes me think, well, I could do most of these just using my brain, which is true. So I'll plot these points, and then I have to stop for a second once I plot them. Because remember, this time, we've got to figure out if I'm using a solid or a dotted line. This time I see they are equal to, so they are equal to means it's going to be solid. So I'm basically just going to, like I normally would with these, connect the dots. So I connect the dots. But this time, since it's not equals, I've got to do something with it. I'm going to shade something. So here's how this works. We're going to pick a point inside the parabola. It doesn't matter what point you pick. So somebody pick a point that's somewhere inside the parabola, a coordinate point. Zero, 10. Zero, 10. OK. So I'm just going to kind of mark that so I see where it's at. So I'm going to test out 0, 10.
And what that means I'm going to do is, of course, the zero value is x and the y value is 10. I'm going to plug them in and see what I get. So 10 is less than or equal to zero squared. So the question of the moment is, is 10 less than or equal to zero? No. That is false. And since it's false, I shade the area outside my curve, outside my parabola, because that's where the solution set would be. All of the answers that I could plug into this that would work are all out here. And that's how these are going to work. So you're like, okay, so if it's just x squared and a number, so you're really going to make me just keep plugging it in? That's what I'm going to do. 0 squared is 0 plus 4 is 4. Okay, I get my first point. And again, I only have to do it for one of these each time. It's not like i got to do it for every single point. So I plug in 1. 1 squared is 1 plus 4 is 5. Okay, I can handle this. Plug in the 2. 2 squared is 4 plus 8 plus 4, excuse me, is 8. Could I do that in the calculator? Sure. Do I need to? That's debatable. So I can fill in my chart, which again I can do without having a graphing calculator. A normal one might come in handy. What type of line am I going to use to connect the dots? Okay, dotted or dashed because I just have the greater than. So I get my dotted working. And then again, I go back and I use a test point that's somewhere inside the parabola. So bless you, if you wanted to go back to the same one, we could. We could use 0, 10 again if we wanted to. So I plug in the 10 for y, I plug in the 0 for x, I go, okay, let's see here, 0 squared is 0 plus 4 is 4. So let's see, is 10 greater than 4? Yes. yes. I hope so. So if it's true, we shade inside the curve, because that's where all the answers are at. And that's all I'm basically doing on these when I'm trying to figure out how the shading works. So one more time. we got to be a little more careful on this one. Zero, okay, so zero plus two is two. Here's where people tend to get themselves in trouble on this. That negative is lurking outside. So for instance, if I was going to plug in one here, this is what it would look like. The negative isn't in the parentheses when it's already in the problem. So 1 squared is 1, but then i got to put the negative on it. So negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Just like when I do it with my 2. Because again, same, same, because i got to see symmetry. Two squared is four, but again, the negative's there. So negative four plus two is negative two. And again, I can plot my points. And I should always be that see that start of kind of like a curve. A little wider than a V though. What type of line are we going to connect the dots with? Dotted, because it's not or equal to. And just like before, now I can't use 0, 10 this time because that wouldn't be in the parabola. My personal favorite when I have it as an option is 0, 0. Because 0, 0 
kind of just wipes everything out. So zero is less than zero plus two. Is zero less than two? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> True inside the parabola. So if you just have x squared or x squared and a plus minus number, I would build myself a chart. Or if you want to put it on the calculator, I suppose you could. That would be okay. Well, what happens if it's not just x squared? What if I get another x term in there somewhere, like I do on 4 or 5? I have a plan that I think most of you are going to like. Go back to our favorite f factoring f word here. What do those two terms have in common? Okay, they both have an x. So if I take out the x, what do I have left to put inside the parentheses? x minus 4. Okay. So here, we're going to use intercepts to draw a quick sketch of a parabola. So here's how this works. If I factor it, which I just did, each part that has x, we set equal to 0. And once I figure out what those values are, add the 4 over, and find my zeros, those are my intercepts. And since we're really just looking for a sketch of this, we're not trying to get fancy, can I tell just by looking at this if my parabola is going to open up or down? <clears throat> Which way is it going to open? Up, because my A value is positive. But it would be nice to have one more point, right? So we're going to get one more point. We're going to find our vertex. So to find the vertex when we're using intercepts, reminder, take my two values, add them up, divide by 2. We're going to find the midpoint. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. Okay, That's the x value of my vertex. To find y, we just plug it in. So my y is going to be 2 squared minus 4 times 2. Just a little substitution. So let's see here. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. So 4 minus 8 is negative 4. So my vertex is a 2 negative 4, and that gives me my third dot, so I can actually make my parabola. And I got fortunate because I almost got sloppy there. Lucky it's solid and not dotted or I'd have been in trouble. And so just like before, once we get it drawn in, find the intercepts, find my vertex. Some of you are still wondering, can I just use the calculator? Yes, but I want to show you a danger here. This is when we get a little over technology dependent. So you're like, okay, well, if I typed it in and I went to the chart, am I going to be able to find symmetry somewhere? Well, yeah, if I just scrolled up and down. There, see, I've got symmetry. I could draw it. I don't have to do all this stuff. That's true on this one. Now we're going to try that again on the next one, and we're going to see what happens to some of you. So this is a surefire way that will work every time. Anybody got a test point for me? Because then we're done. What's that? I thought I heard one. What was zero? Yeah, somebody's got to give me more than zero. We're taking up dead internet time. What? Ten. So like zero ten? Okay. Works for me. So test 010. 
Nothing worse for subscribers than having to have dead internet time. So, 10 is my Y. And then I plug in zero for both of my X's. So that's all gonna be zero. So is 10 greater than or equal to zero? Yes. True. We're shading inside. Okay. So for my people that say, I wanna just use the calculator, okay, I, I wanna show you why that can kind of burn you every once in a while. Because notice here, we got x squared plus 3x. So you go through and you start looking for symmetry. And you're like, well, okay, I see some. Yeah, but you don't have a middle number. You don't have a vertex. You can't have this kind of sloppy, funky-shaped parabola, which tells me this time my vertex might not be a nice number. So... We're going to go back to what we were doing here. They both have an X. Okay. So I'll take that out. I'll get it factored. And just like before, I'll set each of these equal to zero and get my intercepts. So I get my intercepts. So then you're like, okay, you said as long as we get the vertex, three points is okay. And I, I agree with that. So to find my vertex, I'm going to take those two numbers. I'm going to add them up. If I'm punching it in the calculator, i got to have parentheses. And I'm going to see what comes out. And what comes out is a decimal. Oh, yuck. Negative one and a half. But that's not a problem. We have a calculator. So my y is going to be negative 1 and a half squared plus 3 times negative 1 and a half. There's nothing wrong with using a calculator for parts of things. It's just when we sit there and think it's going to do the parabola, it's going to tell me where to shade, it's going to do this, it's going to do that, when we kind of get ourselves into trouble. So, I'm just going to, oh my, oops, I gotta get my three in there. Make sure I type it in right, that's kind of important. Okay. So my vertex is at negative one and a half, negative two and a quarter. And again, we're just kind of eyeballing it here. So negative one and a half, a little more than two. Solid line because of your equal to. And again, I'm back looking for a test point. For some reason, we have fallen in love with 0, 10. So we're going to keep using 0, 10. Even though you could use any value in there you wanted. I always like having 0 as one of my numbers. Having it as both of my numbers is better, but... Okay, so 0, 10. Plug in my 10. Plug in my 0. Plug in my 0. Is 10 less than or equal to zero? No. <coughs> false, false we shade outside the graph. So basically it's graph it, choose a test point. If it's true, it's in. If it's false, it's out. And there's only two types with those. The only other thing that we have to deal with is one slight tweak. You'll notice in all the ones we've done so far, it's always been y is greater than or y is less than, where we're just doing some general graphing. What if I tweak just one little thing, and when we go to the back all of a sudden, the y disappears, 
and gets replaced with zero. That's when we actually get to start solving some things. So when we flip over, we are going to try to attempt avoiding algebraically, just because there's a few things that can cause some issues with that that I really think aren't necessary. So we're going to try to just go graphically here. So graph the quadratic and identify the areas where the function is above or below the x-axis. Okay, here's a definitive for you. When you see greater than zero, greater than zero will be above. Less than zero will be below. And that's going to be important when we go to look for our little parts. So no shading back here. No shading needed. So I get to this, I go, okay, so what do you want me to do? I want you to keep finding intercepts. You're like, okay, but those don't have anything in common. You're right. So we have to factor it. Okay. You're like, really? Even in this section we got to factor? Yes. Okay. So all I'm looking for here is what multiplies to positive 5 and adds up to negative 6. Okay. Negative 5 and negative 1. Negative times negative is positive. Negative 1 plus negative 5 is negative 6. And then I set those each equal to 0. So I get intercepts at 1 and 5. Get my first two points, one point to go. So just like what we did on the front, I'm going to get that vertex. So let's see, add those guys up, divide by 2. So my x value is 3. And again, somebody's going to say, could I just do that on the calculator and scroll up and down? If it works for symmetry, sure, you can. So then y equals, I'm just going to plug it in and I'm going to be done. And I'll let the calculator do all that work. 9 minus 18 is negative 9 plus 5 is negative 4. So I get my third point that I need to be able to make my parabola. But again, I have the one question before I connect the dots. What type of line will be connecting the dots? Dotted, because it's not or equal to. Now again, I don't have to shade this time. Here's the cool thing. And if you don't have a different color to work with, I'm going to work around that too. So when we did this, we looked and we said, okay, this is going to be the area that I'm looking for is below the x-axis. That's what this tells me. So I just want the area of my parabola that's below the x-axis. So I'll kind of use my squiggly line to say that's what I'm looking for. But we're going to use interval notation to signify what this looks like. So here's how this works. I only want to write the part of the parabola that goes from here to here. Okay, so where am I starting? I'm starting left to right, like I always do. My leftmost point's right here at 1. So I start at 1. And just like when we were doing this when we were working on number lines, it's the same thing. What's my furthest point to the right? Right here at 5. That's my interval notation. I'm done. So I just let the graph help me figure out what those values are going to be. Now, can I get into some of the bigger ones with like union? I sure can. We're going to get to see that on the second one. But again, that's what I'm always doing. If it's less than, look at the area below the x-axis. 
If it's greater than like it is here, we're going to be looking at the area above. And that's the one thing I've got to be able to keep straight. So we got a factor again. And there's nothing in common. Oh, crap. But remember, for many of you, this is where we go into slide and divide mode. If you can do this in your head without the slide and divide, that's fine. I'm cool with that. Okay, so I slide my 2 down. I multiply it. Then I got to factor what I see there. So I need two numbers that multiply to negative 6 but add up to negative 5. Negative 6 and 1. But don't forget, and I did last hour, I'll admit it. Don't forget, this is slide and divide. I've still got to do my division, because otherwise I'm going to have my intercepts in the wrong places. So x minus 3. The 1 half doesn't reduce anymore. We'll swing it back to the front. And then I just set those each equal to zero. So it is a process. Each set of parentheses will get me one intercept. Minus the one over. And I'll take a pause here in just a second. So I get my intercepts after I factor it and set those each equal to zero. So I can get those two dots in. And then it's time to work on my vertex. And for my calculator scanners who are just going to look up and down, not going to help you this time because it's going to be a decimal. So one last shot here with the vertex. Add those two guys up. And divide by two. Again, if you want to go to the calculator for that, you're absolutely welcome to. So be two and a half divided by two is 1.25. Yee. Lucky we have a calculator, right? Because now I can just plug that back in. And that's going to be my y value which I don't know this off the top of my head. I even need the calculator this time. So 2 times 1.25 squared minus 5 times 1 and a quarter minus 3. Yee. So my vertex is 1.25 Negative 6.125. Yeah. So I'll get my third point. Solid line. Because of the or equal to. Again, no shading necessary. But this time... Since it was greater than zero, we're looking for the part that's above. So just this piece and this piece. And so the interval notation is going to get a little funky. Because this, to be perfectly honest, keeps right on going and going and going. And this keeps going and going and going. So if that keeps going forever to the left, where am I going to start my interval notation? When we do interval notation, we're forever in a direction. How do we signify that? Infinity. So we're starting forever to the left. So negative infinity, we're way out here somewhere. And we keep coming and coming. And then we get stopped right here at negative 1 half. And then, okay, nothing, 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 nothing. Oops, we start up again. We're starting up again here at 3. 
And off we go forever to the right to infinity. Now, like I said, I'm going to try to avoid algebraically just because I think this is going to be better for those of you who are visual than trying to come up with this number line and test three different points. It that's, takes too long. So here's, here's the game plan. And I've got the problems written up on the board over there. And I'm probably, that would be nice of me. I'll do that. So 14 through 16, that you are going to have to find in the book. That's matching. I'm not drawing that anywhere. So 14 to 16 is matching. 18 to 20. We are going to do graph only with shading, like we did on the front. And then for the rest of it, 36 and 37, 41 and 42, graph with interval notation, like we did in the back. So the matching, which will take like 30 seconds, otherwise you have a whole whopping seven problems you have to graph, of which again, I have written or drawn up over on the right board. And also for video viewing pleasure here momentarily, I will also put on the screen. And then tomorrow we'll be doing some more of this. I'm not just going to leave it after a day. I want to make sure this is good, but it's like always, you've got about 15 minutes to work with right now. Good idea to do maybe one of each of these types. Maybe you do number 18 and number 36 to get some practice. And then when you come in tomorrow, you're kind of ready to go. So when we keep doing this, you're not kind of, eh. So that's kind of our deal. So I'll put this back up for a second on here. So you can see what you're in for. So if you're at home, you can hit pause on this and see what questions you're working with. And if you're here, you can just look on the right board at this point. So this is where the video ends.